Hello, everybody. Welcome to class. Uh, we're going to continue our ACS 1700 Web Foundations class. And I'm here looking at our, our syllabus page on GitHub. And I'm scrolling down to September 1st. And today we are going to talk about CSS box model. So I'm going to open up the slides here. And maybe I'll even present the slides. And today we're going to talk about the box model and flex. So we'll go over the learning outcomes. We'll talk about the box model. We'll review selectors, take a break, talk about Flexbox, and then we'll review the homework. And there's some lab work for you to do to practice all these things. OK, so by the end of class today, you'll be able to draw a picture and describe the CSS box model. OK. Um, create a box of any size. So this is like something on the screen, like it might contain some content of some kind, right, in your web page. And then use flex to arrange elements on the screen. So how big is a box is a great question, right? And it also asks the question, like, what is a box, right? So, you know, a box is basically a rectangle, right? And we have a a system in CSS where some elements are displayed as a box. OK, so all block elements are displayed as a box. So a box is a rectangle. OK. Block elements are tags like article, section, h1, ul, li, p, div, block quote, and pre tag. OK, and there's more, but these are some of the ones that we've used in class so far. These are all blocks. OK. Um, Inline tags do not use the box model, OK? So inline tags are tags like M, span, strong, quote, image, and code, OK? And then there's some more, too. The secret here is actually um, displaying as a box is a property in CSS. And you can make any element display as a block if you want. So you just declare it display block. Um, and, and any element can also be um, display inline. The tags that you're seeing here display as a block or inline by default. It's kind of the default style that's applied to them, but you can change that in your presentation layer, right? It's part of the separation of concerns, right? Okay, so uh, what exactly is the box model, right? Well, every box has a width, a height, padding, border, and margin, okay? So we've got width, height, padding, border, margin. Width and height are obvious. So width is the width of the box. Height is the height of the box. And you can set this in any unit. So it could be in M's or pixels or inches or centimeters. Height is the same way, right? Padding is the space around the content, but still inside the box, OK? And then the border wraps the padded area, OK? So this is the distance between the content and the border. And then the border is like, you know, around the, the content, right? And then margin is outside of the box and it pushes away from the neighbors, okay? So if a box is next to another box, the margin pushes the two apart, okay? Let's look at a picture. So this image here shows maybe a box with some text in it. Looks like a couple paragraphs, right? And um, this area right here is the width and the height, right? The green area is the padding. And then the dark green right here is the border. And the, the dark green, the border, you can style any way you want. So it can have a, be a thicker border, a thinner border, any color you want, right? But the border is here. And then the padding or the margin goes on the outside, right? So this might be 20 pixels of padding, one pixel of border, and 20 pixels of margin, OK? And the height. So the area that a block takes up on the screen is calculated by all of these things, these five features, width, height, padding, border, margin, OK? You can also set the padding, border, and margin differently for each side. So you can put a different amount of padding on the left than on the right, and then different at the top and bottom, too, if you want. OK, let's look at another diagram. So what does this look like when we write CSS code? Well. Here I have um, a box that's got maybe a heading in it, right? It's got the content is the text right here. And then there's 20 pixels of padding. So this pushes away from the border, OK? So here's the border right here. You notice over here I've got um, 
h1 so imagine this tag was the h1 and then it's got a width of 200 right so the width is this wide right here and then it's got a height of 40 and then padding of 20 and margin of 30. okay so the gray area i made the gray but it's really it's kind of invisible right notice the background color we set that to blue and the background color fills everything out to the border so the background falls into the padded area but not in the margin okay hey here's a, a demo page where you can test this out for yourself i'll put a link in the comments um, but it's essentially just an HTML page that, um, let me zoom in a little bit here, that lets you just play with these properties and see how they react. So, you know, poke around with this for a little while for fun and just see what you come up with and just watch, watch how things interact when you type different values in here. So this side of the box right here, the center area is a div that's got a an ID name of box zone and then there's another div inside with the name with the text hello world inside so this red right here is this inner div and then the outer div is this gray border right here so you can see box zone has a border of four pixels solid dark gray or medium gray and then a width of and height of 600 Okay, so let me demonstrate a little bit and then you can play around with it. So you can type in um, anything you want here. Let's do a box model for the win, right? There we go. So I got box model for the win. And then what I want to do is give it a font size. So I'll give it 24 pixels, right? Okay, notice that the default behavior for a box is that the width expands to fill the container so the width is 600 because i have not set it yet okay so it's 600 because it's expanding to fill this container that has a width of 600. the height on the other hand collapses right it collapses around the content so if i make the text smaller like i make it two pixels in size notice the height it collapses right the width is still expands right Let's say I make the text like uh, 33 pixels, right? So it expands to, to, to show the content. So height collapses, width expands, okay? And you can set a border here. Let's give it a border. So maybe I'll give it a purple border. Or I guess that's the color of the text. Let's make it um, kind of yellow, right? And then we'll give it a background color. You can pick any color there. Let's pick a different color. How about that, right? And then we'll give the box a width. So I'll say width of 200 so there's the width of 200 so now that the width is set it does not expand to fill the space okay and notice the the text right here doesn't fit within the box so it wraps onto the next line if the box is not wide enough to display the content then the content overflows the box and it falls outside the box and that's okay too there's a property called overflow and if you don't want this behavior you can set overflow hidden and anything that falls outside the box will be will be hidden okay so uh, let's make the box uh, 220 pixels wide and then we can set the height so notice the height collapses normally so it's just as big as it needs to be but if i set the height to 120 then it'll be 120. If it's smaller, if the height is smaller than the content, then again, the content overflows and we still see it, okay? So there's 120. Let's try some padding. So padding is the space around the content. So this is the content here. Let's get rid of height for a minute so the height collapses. And then for padding, I'll make it padding of 20. So now you'll see that the padding on the left, top, and bottom is hard to see it on the right, but it's there's padding over here too, okay? So we get 20 pixels extra padding. Notice when the padding is zero, okay, the box is the width that we set 220, right? When I make the padding larger, like if I make the padding 20, the whole box grows, right? So the width, the actual like measured width of the box is the width plus the padding, right? So this is 20 on the left and 20 on the right. So that's 40, so this would be 260 from here to here, okay? Let's add a border. So I'm gonna set the border width to 10, right? And notice again, the box grows. Let's make set the border width to 50, right? 
So notice the box is a lot bigger. So if we measure from the outer edge to the outer edge here, it's going to be the width plus the padding plus the width or the width of the border, border width plus the padding plus the width of the box plus the padding plus the border width again. So that's going to be 140 plus another 200. So like 360, I guess, right? Um, did I calculate that right? I don't know. Close enough, right? Three, let's call it 360. So, uh, so there we go. Hey, what about margin? What if I give it a margin of 10? So notice the margin pushes away from the outside. So, and, and I, this is simplified, but you can set the margin differently for all four sides. Okay, but the margin is going to push the box away from the outer edge. So now it's 100 pixels from the left, 100 pixels from the top. Okay, so play around with that for fun. You can even set the border option here. Let's make the border uh, dotted. How about a dashed? Grooved. Crazy, right? Um, give it a color, you know. Okay, so just play around with that. Design a, your favorite looking box there and then come back to this video, right? Okay, so now that you've played around with the box model for a little bit, let's continue right so let's review selectors for a minute and because we'll need these for the next section right so let's review the old selectors and then talk about some new ones okay so in the previous class we talked about the the type selector or the tag selector so in this case if you use the name p then you know just by itself then it will select both tags here both paragraph tags so both paragraph tags will now have font family of helvetica Okay, so that's called the type selector or tag selector, right? Okay, so class names. So um, let me fix my slide here. It needs a little bit of work. Okay, we'll just pretend that never happened. Okay, so, so there's the slides. The slide is fixed, right? So um, here I have a span that has a class name error right and i want to style that span right this is good if you have um elements that are going to share the same style so in my case span i might have other spans that don't use the don't need to be red and bold right so only some of them are going to be red and bold and maybe i have some other elements that aren't spans like this paragraph here and that also needs to be red and bold so in that case i can put error class on the paragraph and error class on the span and they will both be color red and font weight bold okay so class names um, begin with a dot in your style sheet so there's a dot right no space around the dot but just dot and then name and then the name here matches the name that you've put in the class attribute here so you just can add the you add the class attribute to any tag and you know you say class equals and you put the name of your class notice there's no dot here Okay, let's talk about ID for a minute. Okay, so an ID should be unique for the page and you use it the same way as you use a class. You say ID equals and you put a name in there. Okay, um, and then the name over here to style it or select it with your CSS selector, you use the hashtag. Okay, so just like the dot, but instead of the hashtag or instead of the dot, you use the hashtag and this denotes a ID or an ID, okay? So here the um, section would get margin of 10, border of one pixel dashed black, okay? Uh, next, let's talk about um, a new selector, okay? So here, this is, um, actually, let me make one more edit here. This says select by ID. Let's do, let's call this um, select descendant. How about that, right? Okay. So um, a descendant is a tag that's inside of another tag. It's nested within that tag. So H1 and P are both descendants of section. Article and, wait, there's another, God, I got all these spelling errors. This needs to be section. There we go, right? Okay, so the article tag and the section tag here are, are siblings. They're at the same level right so if i wanted to get the about me tag actually wait let me fix i got one other there's one other sorry i have all these errors here there we go okay 
there we go. Sorry about that. So um, this notice there's no space here, right? So actually, wait, let me do let me change this to I thought this was something else because I had misspelled that. Let's do let's do um, select uh, uh, class and type. How about that? That makes more sense. There we go. Right. OK. Sorry about the, the confusion there. So here I have a, a section that has a class name about me and I have an article that also uses the same class. So in this case, if I just use the class name dot about me, it would get both of these, the section and the article. But what I want to do is I just want to get this section, right? So what I could do is I could say section dot about me. And this means any tag with the section name, right? Type section, but also has the, the class name about me. Okay. So this says, both of these features are what we're looking for. Okay, so a section tag with the class about me, not an article with the class about me, right? Okay, so next example, right? Um, descendant. See, this is the one I thought we were on, right? Okay, so descendant, right? So the descendant selector is the space. Okay, so if you put a space between two selectors, that's why over here, um, let me. Go to the previous one here that's why over here we don't have a space around the dot okay here we have a space right so here what we're saying is um when you have some we're looking for something that is an h2 but the h2 is a descendant of something with the class name dot about me okay so here i have a section with class name about me and there's an H2 inside it. So this H2 would be selected. The H2 right here would not be selected, okay? So just for fun, if we wanted to, I think I did this in the earlier classes, why those were messed up. If we wanted to do, if we wanted to select both of these H2s that were inside a section, we could say section like this, and then we're saying descendant space, right? descendant h2 so here this h2 would be selected because it's a descendant of a section and this h2 would be selected because it's a descendant of a section okay i'm going to put that back there right okay so um descendant selector so selects something that's inside of something else and we denote that with a space okay okay so here's a quick one. See if you can answer this question. How do we select the image tags that are inside the paragraph? Right, so there's an image tag outside the paragraph photo three, but we want to get photos one and two. What would you do? Okay, so the answer here is we can use the descendant selector and we can say image space, or I mean paragraph space image, okay? Let's try another one. Yeah, there we go. Paragraph space image, right? And there's others too, actually. Let's go back to this one. Uh, another option here would be, um, uh, you could actually, I guess you can't do it here because there's no class name, but if it had a class name, that would work. You could also write a rule for the two IDs here, but that would be kind of tedious where this one's kind of nice. It gets them both, right? Okay, let's do another one. So here, we want to get all the inputs inside the span with the class name error. So here I have an input. <clears throat> it's inside the class name or a span with the class name error. And I don't want to style these two inputs outside. What can we do? How would you do that? OK, let's take a look at the answer. So uh, span dot error, right? So that gets this tag here, only this span, because it has class error, and then space and input, right? And we get this one, okay? And there's other selectors you could use. There's a lot of different ways to select these things, right? Okay, hey, why don't we practice our selectors again? If you haven't completed the CSS Diner um, game, then let's take some time and do that right now. I'll pull it up. So if you recall, this is the game where you come up with the CSS selectors to uh, find these things, right? So this says select the third plate, right? So there's there's 32 of these. Try to get them all, right? Um, I'm on number 18 right here, nth child, right? 
And there's all the selectors we just saw are in here too. So here's like a tag name, ID, um, ID and tag, uh, class name, uh, tag name and class name, right? So all of them are represented here. So spend a few minutes, like maybe 15 minutes working on this and see if you can complete it and then um, come back to the video. Okay, now that you're done there, let's continue. So um, you can take a break if you want. I'm going to skip over the break because I'm just recording this video. Let's talk about Flexbox, okay? So what is Flexbox, right? So Flexbox or Flex is a tool you can use to arrange things on the screen, okay? I should put in here that you're, you arrange things in rows or columns, okay? So anytime you want to put things in a row, that's like a horizontal line or in a column, they're all stacked up vertically. You want to use Flex. It's the best tool for this and it's got a lot of options, okay? Let's take an example. Let's say you want to build an online store and you want to arrange the contents of your store into rows, okay? And then we want the size of the screen, we want the, the rows to you know, change the number of items on a row to fit the size of the screen, right? So how do we do that? We can use flex, okay? So here is a sample. This was just taken from the web. Someone's store looked like this, right? What did they do, right? Well, first we need a, we need to create a row, okay? So to do that, we need three block elements. So these could be, each, each one of these boxes here with the black border around it could be a div, a section, an article, an li tag, or a figure, okay? Right, so any, one, any block tag would work, okay? Um, so how might we arrange this? Well, first of all, the, let's say I used a, a ul tag because I felt that a list, like a list of products worked best for this situation, right? So I got the ul here. It's the container, that's the red box that goes around everybody, it's the parent, okay? And then I have three children, three li tags, okay? Each one with class product. And those are the green, blue, and purple boxes, okay? If I gave the ul dot container, that's this guy, right? Display flex, the boxes would all line up in a row, okay? on the horizontal axis. So the axis is the red line. So when you're using flex, you always have to visualize where the axis is because that determines how the layout is created, okay? So the axis can be vertical or horizontal. By default, it's horizontal, so I don't have to set the axis, but there's a property that lets you set it. So by default, it's horizontal, it's row. So, um, so I didn't have to set anything, and these guys are all in a row, okay? What if we have the product box here and inside we've got an image, a heading, a description, and a price, right? So that would be image, H3, paragraph, and paragraph, right? What if we want those to align on the vertical axis, okay? Well, we could style class product, that's the parent li, and then give it display flex and use flex direction column to align everybody on a column, right? So now the axis is vertical. So remember like with Flexbox, we always want to think about the axis, right? So here the axis is vertical, right? If I go back to the previous one, another key feature here is Flexbox arranges all of the children, right? All the children, notice that the children here, the li tags are arranged in a row on the horizontal axis but the tags inside the product are not affected, right? They're not arranged in a row, okay? So flex only applies to the children. It does not apply to the descendants or the tags that are nested deeper into the, um, in, you know, deeper in the, the parent or container element, okay? Okay, so here we've got uh, display flex, flex direction column, and then our image, H3, P, and P get arranged in a vertical arrangement, okay? So here's the documentation for Flexbox. Take a few minutes and read this, okay? So just read this page and it'll give you some background information. And you can always come, you may not understand all of it off the top and you don't have off the top of your head and you may not, or first reading and you may not, um, you know, 
be able to remember it all. Even if you're understanding it, you may not be able to remember it all just with one reading. So read it once to get some of the ideas and then go back to it, right, as you work, okay? So you can click on this. Oops, wait, let me go back there. Um, sorry, I got the wrong, hold on. Sorry, I went to the wrong page there. There we are, okay. So, um, yeah, let me go get the documentation here. That's what I want, right? So um, here's the complete guide to Flexbox. Here's all the chapters here. Read the background. This gives you a lot of information on Flexbox. Read about the terminology. So this kind of names all the elements and features. You know, you don't see all these, but they're they're in the workings of Flexbox and you'll read about it in the documentation, right? And then you can look at some of these examples here. So spend a few minutes on that and then come back to the slides. Okay, so let's, uh, let's continue with the slides here. So uh, here we are. Let's just take a simple example. Let's imagine we have display flex and we've applied it to the UL tag. So I got the UL here as my selector. ULs are normally like list items and they list vertically. But if I set um, uh, display flex, the default, uh, the default orientation or direction is row. So all of a sudden, all my list items align in a horizontal row. Right. And you can style them so that the bullet point is gone too. You can remove the bullet point with your style sheet. So don't even worry about that. Right. Um, so main axis again is horizontal. Right. OK. Uh, what if we did? Oh, yeah. And this is kind of like we don't have to say row because it's the default. But if you said row, it would look like this. Right. OK. Um, what if you wanted to do flex direction column? So you can change flex direction to column and then everybody would align in a vertical column, okay? Here's some animation showing how it works. So there's a couple choices. So we can do justify content, right? And justify content says, um, and there's a few options for it. It says how things align on the axis. OK, so flex direction. This says justify content and this says direction. Wait, we're going to come back to justify content in a minute. Right. Um, and because it has more options. Right. But for flex direction, it's column and row. Sorry, that was a little confused. But um, here's column and row. Let's go to the next one. Right. So here, if we do justify content, we say like how things arrange themselves on the main axis. So it's kind of subtle here, but notice there's some space at the top and bottom. So if the main axis stretches from the top to the bottom, notice all my items are in the center because I set justify content to center. OK, so here's an animation of justify content, right? So if we set justify content to center, all the items are in the center, space between and all the space goes in between space around and you have equal space on even either side. Flex start, they're all at the beginning. Flex end, we're all at the end, right? So you can imagine with justify content that the axis is like a string or something and you're sliding the elements along that axis. They have to move on that string, right? Like these are beads or something, okay? And there's a couple choices. So flex start, flex end, center, space between, space around, okay? Okay, the align items, okay? So align items determine how elements are arranged on the cross axis. So the main axis is the red line. Justify content handles that. Um, align items is the cross axis, right? And if we do stretch, they stretch. If we do baseline, they all the text aligns on the bottom edge. Flex start, everybody goes to the top. Flex end, everybody goes to the bottom center and everybody's centered okay baseline you can see the text aligns all all the text boxes align on the bottom edge so the text is aligning okay so let's do some lab time i got a couple exercises for you here is the exercise right here i'm going to click on the link and this is going to show another one of those kind of interactive demos that kind of show how flexbox works so if I have a box here, it's hard to see because there's no border or background color, but this is a, you know, just a div or something that has some text in it called that says child, right? 
So if I choose display flex, nothing happens, but this single box is arranged on a row, okay? If I choose flex end, that pushes the box all the way to the right. If I choose center, it's in the middle. And if I choose space around, it's not going to change because all the space is on either side, right? You know, space between doesn't, I guess this one actually does because it puts the space on one side and then space evenly, okay? Let's see, what if I do center and then I switch it back to block? Mm, nothing happens, right? Because flex needs to be turned on. So flex is turned on for the container and child is a child of this demo, of this element with demo class, okay? You can click the button here to add some more boxes. I'm gonna actually refresh that and add a couple boxes. So this is what it would look like normally, right? So I'd have a child and then the other boxes would all stack up vertically. Um, remember there, the box model says that the boxes expand to fill the container and then they collapse around the content. So these boxes must have some padding. This box has no padding, okay? What if we do display flex, right? I got five boxes now, what happens? Well, they all align horizontally. Okay, so they all align horizontally. This says stretch is the default. I'm gonna set it to flex start there, right? Okay. So what if we move them on the main axis? So main axis is horizontal. What if we move them all um, to the center? Right, now they're in the middle. What if we do space around? Okay, so now we have equal space. Now this is larger here than on the outside, and that's because this element has this much space on the left and the right, and the blue one has the same amount of space on the left and right. So the middle space here is double what you'll see on the outside, okay? You could do space uh, evenly, right? And now they have an equal space here and here and here, right? So they have an equal space on either side, okay? Um, space around, right? So now this, wait, a space between, right? So now all the space goes between the elements, no space on the outside, okay? And if we wanna change that to a column, we can do this and they're all in a column, right? So that's the main axis, right? Let's talk about a line item. So now the cross axis is going, since we're column for the main axis, the cross axis is horizontal. So I'll choose, um, actually I'll go to here and say a line item stretch. And now they stretch all the way across, right? Flex start, flex end, um, center, right? Okay. So, um, so hopefully that helps you understand how to, how to work with the box model um, or flex box and the box model. Let's do one more example. If I wanna put this child element in the middle of the screen, like sometimes people wanna do that, we're gonna set um, flex, we'll set center for justify content and align items will also be centered, right? So that's pretty easy. Okay, so now let's continue with our slides here. So here's some exercises that I want you to work through. So these are on GitHub, I um, mean on Gradescope. So you'll you'll download these from GitHub and then you'll submit your answers to, to, um, to Gradescope. I'm gonna click on this here and these examples are just easy. They're just exercises. You're gonna work through them. There's a solution file for each example. So if you get stuck, you can refer to the solution. Um, you can also, like I would suggest also looking at the solution first to see what the goal is, like where you wanna go with the code that you're writing, okay? So I'm gonna download this as a zip. I'll um, open it up in VS Code. And this is another example where I want you to um, view the changes in the browser as you work. So I'll go to my first solution here and I'll click go live and it's gonna open it up in the browser window here and then I can see the code here side by side. So this is what you wanna make. So we wanna have three boxes that are spaced in the center and stacked up vertically and then the content needs to be in the center of each box. Okay, so how do we do that? So I'm gonna to go to this example here. So this is the challenge example right here. And I'll, I'll start it and you can't see anything, right? But it just looks like ABC. So there's like three boxes here that just have the text in them. So what are we gonna do? 
Um, first of all, I'll just walk through this example here. It says set the height of the container to 100%. So this is important here, and let me show you why, right? So if I inspect the example here, and I hover over the, the HTML tag, the blue area that you're seeing up here so highlighted is the height of the HTML box. So that means if I tried to position these in the center, they would have to be in the center of the blue area, right? That doesn't extend down into the white area here. It's, it's not obvious, but that's the way HTML works. The, all elements collapse vertically. So that means the HTML and the body tag also collapse, right? So if I look at the HTML tag, you can even see this little yellow tag right there. Do it for yourself. It's hard to read on my screen, but it looks like it's 1,024 wide and 70 pixels tall, right? So I don't really have any vertical space to get those boxes spread out all the way across the screen, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the height of the body and the HTML tag to 100%. And that will force them to take up the height of the, of the window, okay? So I'll save that. It doesn't look like anything changed here, but watch when I hover over the HTML tag, it, it has expanded to fill the whole height of the window. And if I look at the yellow sticky note up there, it tells me that it's 938 tall. So I know that it's, it's taking up the whole space, okay? Okay, great. So now let's do the other one. Let's set the font size to 2M. So you're just going to follow the instructions here. Some of these don't give you all of the instructions coming. I'm assuming that you picked up some of the ideas from the previous one and you're, you know, you don't just copy and paste this, right? And then you also have to follow the, the, um, the syntax, right? So when I, if I did copy and paste this, I'd have to be sure to put the semicolon at the end, right? So now we're doing font size 100 pixels. We'll do height of 100 pixels, right? And if I do this and I hover over the boxes here again in the inspector, you'll see that the blue area shows me that the box is 100 by 100 pixels, right? 100 by 100, okay? So let's continue. So let's do background color. Um, I'm gonna do tomato because that's my favorite color. And then let's do, now we're gonna do display flex. Now, when we do display flex here, it's going to arrange the content of every element that's dot box. So this is div dot box, and the only content there is the letter A, right? So that's the only thing that's going to be affected here, but it's going to be the, it's also going to affect this box and just the B inside that box and the C inside this box, right? So let's try it. Let's do display flex, okay? It doesn't look like anything happened, right? Because everybody's arranged horizontally, and um, they're starting at flex start, which is the left side. So now let's um, arrange everything with justify content center. Okay, so we're gonna arrange everybody on the main axis. So I'll do justify content center, and then we see that all the boxes move horizontally. So every one of these red boxes is its own flex container, and it's arranging the text that's inside. Okay, now let's align items. So let's align items center. Okay, now we got all these boxes arranged. Let's try the body tag now. So I want to use the body tag as a parent and I want to arrange each of the three divs. Okay, so let's do uh, display flex. Right now everybody's arranged in a row. Let's do flex direction column. Now they're in a column. Let's justify content space around. And now they're all spaced out, right? And then we'll do um, align items center. Okay, and now they should be in the middle. Okay, so you try that on your own. That was the first example. Go through each of the examples and, and you know follow the comments, okay? Let's take a look at these and I'll just show them to you and we'll just see where you're gonna go with them, right? So here is the same thing, but here I have nested boxes, right? So we're going to arrange the parent element with flex, and then each parent element will arrange its children, the green boxes, okay? Notice here the boxes are in two to a row, and then the third one wraps onto the next row. And here we have four, 
and then when we have five, we have two rows, and then the next one wraps, okay? So essentially, these guys can, can use um, flex wrap as the property, okay? Let's go to the uh, next example here. Here again is the solution. So here's a more practical example. Let's say we wanted to take the weather forecast. You mark this up yourself, but let's say now you want to style it. Here we use flex to style it, okay? Let's do another one. Um, here's a form. So this is very typical. You'll see a lot of this. You're probably using forms every day on the internet. Maybe you want to arrange them. So this is going to use Flexbox again, right? So everybody's arranged in a column. And then this guy's align self to push him over to the, to the right side, okay? And then here's another example. This is maybe like some cards. Maybe we got some inter information that we're showing in boxes, right? So we got an image. So these are arranged. The group is arranged horizontally in a row, and then each card is arranged vertically, okay? So we have a nested flex arrangement, right? This is kind of like the shopping um, site example, okay? So you try those on your own, and then, um, and then, yeah, I guess, yeah, so you just try to solve all those on your own, just follow the instructions, right? And then, you know what, I'll go over the, um, the homework really quick, and um, you can come back to this if you want, but the homework here is um, in our, let me go back here, is in our syllabus page. You're gonna do the CSS challenges, you're gonna submit these to Gradescope, and then you're gonna start working on your portfolio, and that's due on the 13th, so you're gonna style your portfolio. Okay, so you can read the homework description here for that. Okay, um, you know, style it, use tag name, class name, ID name, um, style of typography, use these properties, right? And you can pull out any ideas from those examples and apply them to your homework if you want, right? So maybe have an eye for that as you go through the examples, okay? And anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in class.